afternoon. Um, you know, first and foremost, I'd like to thank our fans uh, for coming out and providing an unbelievable atmosphere and, uh, you know, great home field advantage for, for our team. You know, truly, truly some of the best fan support in all of college football. Uh, I thought it was a great team win, uh, one of our most complete uh, games of the season. Thought there were positive contributions in all three phases. Uh, entered the game with an aggressive mindset and carried it through four quarters. Ultimately came out on top in the statistical categories, which we believe determine the outcome of games. Uh, explosive play margin, uh, which was great to get back on track offensively. And turnover margin uh, while winning situational football on third down and in the red zone. Uh, proud of our players and the way they've held true to our process, our culture, and our standard for success in times of prosperity and adversity. Thought we had a solid week of practice, played with tremendous effort, and most importantly, executed at a high level of precision. And uh, there's no magic wand. Uh, that's why we won the game and, you know, to get our uh, second win over a top 25 team in the season. I think first time since 2014. Uh, I think that's a great testament to our team and our kids and our program. So certainly uh, very happy coming out of that. Um, our players of the week uh, on offense, uh, Nick Fitzgerald. On defense, we had co-players of the week, Errol Thompson and Jaquarius Landrews. And on special teams, co-players as well, Chris Ray Rayford and Tim Washington. Our scouts of the week uh, on offense were Brad Cumbus and Jaquarius Spavi. On defense, Chris Redman. And on special teams, Saman Anderson. Uh, our student athletes of the week uh, were Daryl Williams and Grant Harris. Okay. Uh, injury update, uh, Colin Hill uh, is getting better every day. Uh, still day to day, but progressing. Uh, did practice yesterday, so we're feeling optimistic about that. And uh, Keith Mixon uh, with a lower body as well. Uh, still day to day, he's progressing and we're very optimistic there. On the defensive side of the ball, Brian Cole is uh, officially out for the remainder of the season. I'm not sure if we discussed that with an upper body. Uh, so Brian is out for the rest of the season. And uh, Braxton Hoyette still with a lower body day to day. And uh, we're optimistic about him as well. So we're hoping to get him back uh, as soon as possible. Uh, moving on to Louisiana Tech. Uh, obviously led by coach Skip Holtz. Uh, 43 and 30 in his sixth season was a 2016 Conference USA Coach of the Year. Uh, with the win over FAU, uh, coach became the third winningest coach in school history. Very disciplined team. They're fifth in the country in penalties. Uh, their offense coordinator is Todd Fitch, a uh, very experienced veteran uh, of the college football profession. He coaches wide receivers. Uh, they're a spread RPO quick game attack, averaging 28 points a game, uh, 142 on the ground, and 248 in the air, uh, led by quarterback Jamar Smith, a product of Meridian. Uh, he's thrown for just about 2,000 yards this year and 12 touchdowns. Operates the system very well, uh, more of a thrower than a runner, but can pull the ball down and be a threat there when necessary. Uh, Jaquees Dancy is their leading rusher, good speed, very elusive. And I think they've got an excellent, excellent receiving core, and that shows up in the LSU game. Uh, those guys made a bunch of plays. Uh, Adrian Hardy is a legitimate deep threat, and then Teddy Veal is their leading receiver. Uh, moving over to the other side of the ball, uh, the coordinator is Blake Baker. You know, they play a mix of three and four down fronts, one and two high zones, and some man. Uh, they're 18th in the country in sacks per game uh, and 29th in pass defense. Uh, they are led by defensive lineman Jalen Ferguson, who is, uh, you know, regardless of level, a uh, power fiber group of five, one of the best, best and most pr productive pass rushers uh, will face this season. Uh, he currently sits at 37 tackles, an amazing 14 and a half for loss and 10 and a half sacks. Uh, currently leads the nation in sacks, and Bill, if I'm not mistaken, is the act, current active leader in the FBS in, uh, in career sacks. So he's certainly a force to be reckoned with. Uh, linebacker Colin Scott, 56 tackles, six and a half for loss, and a sack and a half leads the team in tackles. And linebacker Amik Robertson has uh, 34 tackles, a pick, and eight PBUs, very quick and very athletic. Uh, Eric Link is our special teams coordinator. Uh, the key stat there, they have blocked three field goals this year, including one to win the game versus North Texas. Uh, and Teddy Veal is a returner. He's averaging 14 yards uh, per punt return. And their kickoff return, uh, Michael Sam is averaging almost 22 yards uh, in kickoffs, in kickoff returns. Um, you know, for us, uh, you know, certainly it's going to be homecoming. Uh, you know, two home games left. I think it would be tremendous. You know, for our fans to continue to do the things that they've done this season, uh, and um, 
you know, support this team and provide a great home field advantage, and particularly everything this senior class has done uh, for this school and this university to, to, on homecoming to come out and support those guys. I certainly have the utmost respect for Coach Holtz and his staff and their program. Uh, bowl eligible at 6-2, and two, uh, playing with a ton of confidence. We're very competitive against LSU and discuss with our team our need to compete against a standard, not an opponent, and the consistent habits will yield consistent results. Uh, we need to have a great week of practice, play with tremendous effort, uh, and execute our scheme with precision uh, one rep at a time for four quarters. And uh, if that occurs, the score, will, the score will take care of itself. So very excited about this opportunity, you know, fired up about where we are uh, coming off a, a huge win at home and providing some great momentum into the, to the tail end of the season here. I love the Penguin representation as well as the Pirate representation. And with that, I'll take any questions. Coach, last year, Earl Thompson showed a lot of flashes and, and played in a backup role behind Des Harris. When you got here, how quickly did you see him make that transition in, into being the player he has been so far this year? You know, I, I think he was, you know, kind of quiet during, um, you know, winter conditioning when we're allowed to be around the guys and, you know, you're doing drills in the weight room. Coach Paroli talked about him. But I think his kind of understated leadership really didn't show up until spring ball and fall camp once you get on the field. So he's kind of a guy that, you know, does it more by example than, than vocally. But, you know, once we put the pads on and he started communicating, started flying around and hitting, I think you, you knew at that point that he was going to have a chance to be something special. Hey, Joe, with, with Brian Cole out, obviously Landrews is, has really kind of stepped into to that role and played really well. And I know Marcus Murphy's come in there yep. and giving you some good reps. How do you feel about that position and kind of, uh, I guess, how those guys have stepped into that role with Cole out? No, I think it's it's been very great for uh, for Landrews and, and you know, kind of across the board in this game with Kylan out and Braxton out and other guys stepping up and you know um, kind of not missing a beat. But uh, you know, JQ he's playing he's playing fantastic football right now, and I think he's been you know very productive. I think he's been very steady. You know, made a lot of impact plays, and you know, kind of early on in the season, you know, people talking about Marcus because of you know the fanfare coming out of a local school and how talented he is. And, uh, you know, see him kind of, as we you know, kind of talked about, easing his way into it and making plays on special teams, which he did at first, and now being in our, our cheetah package and, and doing some things and getting some reps. I think uh, it was a uh, valuable experience for Marcus this, the past two games, and, and I think it was a good decision to get him on the field and not redshirt him. I know the, uh, there's more to the position than just catching passes, but how do the tight ends kind of get involved, and what do they have to do to get more involved in the passing game? Yeah, we, we, we had some routes dialed up for him. For this game, and uh, you know they were a target on a couple of the, the, you know, the naked passes out in the flat, and uh, you know we had one uh, in the second half that, that, that was getting thrown to the tight end, and, and the coverage dictated. I think they took a sack or threw it away there. So um, you know a lot of that is coverage based and scheme based. You know we uh, have plays on the board uh, when we game plan to make sure that there are opportunities for all the skill positions, and they're there. Uh, a lot of it is coverage based, uh, you know, where the ball goes. So uh, we make sure that the Z, the H, the X, you know, the tight ends and the backs are going to have opportunities and we're dispersing the ball to our playmakers. You know, a lot of it's dictated by the coverage. Kind of going off of that, two of the receivers had well over 200 of Nick's 241 yeah. passing yards. How much of an emphasis is it to sort of get some of those other receivers involved? Yeah, we, that's a good question. We, we, we uh, when we watched the film on, uh, Sunday and talked about moving forward into this week that, uh, you know, we needed to, and I say do more things to get the slots, the H position and the tight ends involved in the past game because I said a lot, like a, a lot of it is coverage dictated. But, but those are guys that I think did some things early on. And you know, not that we've gotten away from them, but the ball's gone to other places. So I, I think the more balance that we can have in uh, getting everybody involved makes, makes defenses defend the width and the length of the field. So, you know, that, that, that's something that was discussed, trying to get those guys more involved. Joe, what's, what's kind of your thoughts on the, I guess, the status of the punting game right now, and, and what can be done uh, there, I, I guess, to to improve upon it? I'm in favor of it. No, it's, it's punting. Um, no, th this is another game where we didn't win the field position battle, and you know, you talk about hidden yardage, and, and I, I don't want to put the onus squarely on the punting game, but you know, when you come out and you know see the other people hitting it 50 and flipping the field, you know, I, I think we're doing a really good job with the protection. I think we're doing a good job in coverage. I think both guys have shown flashes uh, of 
you know, where we need to be for kicking the ball, and they're both very talented. At this point, I think it's more of a consistency thing than anything. So we've got to, uh, you know, find ways to get the ball kicked over people's head and force them to fair catch it and not have low line drives. So, uh, you know, more than anything, it's a consistency issue right now. You mentioned after the game this kind of being a more a better representative of your play calling style, yeah. being being more aggressive as you as you evaluated it. How close was that to being what you want to be as a play caller? I'd say f pretty representative, you know, and, and I think you know it goes back to uh, you know the balance aspect of you know wanting to run it and pass it with equal effectiveness, and if, if one of the two. Uh, Parts of your game gets shut down, being able to lean to to the other part, and uh, you know I said you know the pass game is what was missing, but uh, you know I, I just you know for whatever reason it, 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 I, I just feel you know going into that game we said you got to remember what got us here, and uh, you know that's that's what we're going to be moving forward. Yeah, that, that's kind of having success, doing what you want to do moving forward, but having success with it now is this kind of what you were getting at when you mentioned building for the future, but also having success right now? Yeah, and, and, and as I said before, you know, great leaders look in the mirror, not out the window. And, and we were having trouble scoring points like we were at LSU and, you know, you know, had success at different parts of the season. You know, the first person that has to ask, what can you do better is the head coach and the guy that runs the offense. And, uh, you know, talk to the team Friday night before the game that, uh, I was trying to game plan and call the perfect play, you know, every single time, and that's not just realistic. And, and when you're trying to make everything perfect every single time, then, then uh, you know, the resor results weren't, weren't in our favor. And when just went back to game planning it, calling it aggressively, and doing what we do well, and uh, you know, staying, you know, dictating the tempo of the game rather than reacting to the tempo of the game, I think that that's something that. Uh, you know, it was an element that may have been missing uh, at times in the middle part of the season and one that won't be missing moving forward. Coach, a lot of the ball games, you've been a little buttoned up, but after that first touchdown, you got showed some emotion and grabbed a few people by the face mask and showed some, some genuine passion there. What was kind of the thought behind all that stuff? No, I mean, I, prom I, mean, I have it in me. I mean, what, what you see in front of the cameras or – you know, it always and what, what's you know seen behind closed doors when you're talking to the team or getting the guys fired up and uh, you know that was organic that one fake and that wasn't manufactured. I mean, I was truly that fired up and you know my my college head coach is he now works as a director of player development at Rutgers and you know shot me a text after the game and said that looked like the guy who played for me. So uh, you want attitude to reflect leadership. You know, you don't want the players to see the head coach out of control, but at the same time, you know, you want them to see that that. Uh, you're as invested in the game emotionally as they are, and uh, I was. And uh, I think we may need more of that. And like I said, as a first-time coach with a new team and you're learning the culture and you're learning their personalities, you know, there's ways you have to change throughout the season. And, uh, you know, you don't want the team that was at Kentucky uh, where the coach was in control and the players are out of control. And you don't want a game where the coach is out of control and the players are in control. you got to find that happy medium, and, I, and hopefully we find that on Saturday. Going up, to, uh, following up on that, I guess. Um, I mean, obviously, it's been a, a roller coaster of a season. But how do you think the guys have sort of adjusted to what you said? You know, you sort of changing your emotions, and, and do you think they've sort of stayed even keel through all of that and sort of gravitated to what you've tried to do there? Yeah, I think they reacted well to it, and I think um, you know the thing that I've been most one of the things I've been the most proud of throughout the season, you know that there's been some ups and downs, there's been, you know, a lot of prosperity, a little bit of adversity, that the team has, has remained on an even keel emotionally, and you, you haven't seen the uh, result affect our effort. And, uh, you know, we've come out on a daily basis, and these kids have really practiced their butts off. And, uh, you know, whether we're, and I meant, I, that's what we talked about after practice yesterday, whether we're coming off a win, coming off a loss, you know, re you know regardless of what the circumstance is, we're not letting it dictate uh, how we prepare and how hard we play. And uh, you know, I think we're seeing increased execution in the kids trusting the process and believing the things that we tell them are necessary for us to be successful. And I think that's uh, a positive in, in two regards. One, for the immediacy of this season and, and what we have to do moving forward. And two, understanding what we're doing for the long term here.
Coach, I know you talked about this a lot on Saturday, but Nick gets another SEC Player of the Week. Just yeah. What does it mean to you to, to see him finally get to where no, you expected I think, him? I think that's his second, if I'm not second for a season, which is, which is great for him. And, you know, once again, and I'm not going to go back and, you know, belabor the point. I kind of made my thoughts crystal clear on, on Saturday. But once, you know, excellent validation for him to come out, bounce back, and play like he's capable of playing and uh, – doing the things in both the run and the pass game and leading the team and, you know, being resilient and being a captain and all the things that go along with being a great teammate. Uh, I thought it was a, a good day for the whole team and, and, a, and an excellent day for Nick. Appreciate your time, guys. Hill State.